Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about rod length in small streams. Um, and fishing small streams as much as I do, this is something I kind of take for granted. But I've seen a lot of guys who fly fish quite a bit, and even guys who fish small streams quite a bit, be surprised to find out that me and the other guys in this area fish a lot of long rods. Um, and a caveat I'll give you before I give all my reasons for loving small rods. I do fish pretty high gradient mountain streams. Um, so I have seen some very low gradient, very flat small streams where not all of this applies, but most of this applies pretty well across any type of small stream. Um, so the first reason that I fish long rods is and this is the biggest reason is for the reach for high sticking. Uh, we do primarily high sticking up here in the Smokies. If you don't know what high sticking is, that's where we're taking that rod and we're just lifting all that line up off the rod or water by reaching that rod out as opposed to mending our line. <clears throat> and a 10 foot rod just gives you superior reach for that as opposed to a uh, seven foot rod or six foot rod, or I've even had guys show up to fish small streams with a five and a half foot rod because they've always heard this, you know, when you're fishing small streams, fish a small rod. And uh, that 10 foot rod just allows you to make that clean drift from so much further away from these fish. Uh, I mean, you're talking about with a, you know, from a seven foot rod to a 10 foot rod, three feet might not sound like a huge difference if you're used to fishing big rivers. And we're talking about maybe being 30 feet from this fish or 33 feet from this fish. But in these tight streams, we're talking about with a 10 foot rod, I might be able to make that clean drift from 14 feet away from that fish. And with that seven foot rod, I'm gonna have to be 11 feet from that fish. And that's a, that's a pretty big difference. Uh, three feet is a, is a big difference in a game where you're talking about the difference between being um, close enough to make your drift and so close that you're spooking the fish is often a matter of inches. So to me, losing that three feet of reach is just not a sacrifice I'm willing to make. It's just not acceptable. And uh, another big reason why I fish these long rods is because this whole idea that you don't have room for them in small streams is just largely not true. Uh, we've got pretty high gradient streams here and that keeps these river corridors pretty open for from vegetation we have quite a bit of room for casting more than you would think we do um, so it's it's very rare that i find myself in a scenario where i do not have room to overhead cast a or sidearm cast a nine or ten foot rod but i would have room to overhead cast or sidearm cast a seven foot rod and if you are finding yourselves in that situation a lot, and if, if you're buying a rod based on that situation where you have room to cast, to back cast a seven footer and not a nine footer, you must be planning on doing that a lot. And that scenario we're talking about, that's very little room for error. So you're gonna have to be throwing, a, a pretty well throwing a laser beam of a loop and you're gonna have to be doing it consistently. and. Can you do that in a fishing scenario? Can you consistently, because you are you must be planning on doing a lot of that if you're gonna buy a rod for that purpose, to fish these tight little windows where you can't throw a nine foot rod. Can you very consistently in a fishing scenario throw a loop tight enough to make that cast where you can get a seven footer and you can't get a nine footer in? Because a lot of people can't, and even a lot of people in this, professionals in this industry, can't throw that tight of a loop that consistently. Um, and then, in, the the big thing with scenarios like that is most of the time we're just roll casting. When we have a scenario, if I have a 10 foot rod and I can't back cast it, we're just going to roll cast. And we do primarily roll casting anyways. Uh, and a 10 foot or even a nine foot rod is just way better at roll casting than these short little rods. I don't know if you've ever tried to roll cast a six foot rod. It's terrible. It's a nightmare. Even a seven foot rod is not good at roll casting. But these 10 footers, they just roll cast like that's what they were made for. Uh, so with as much of that as we do up here, it's that that's a big plus to me. And then when you start getting talking about getting even tighter than that, even tighter than streams where you don't have room to back cast, but you start talking about streams where you don't have room to roll cast, where you're doing bow and arrow casting. Again, I want a long rod. Um, I will start downsizing from a 10 foot when we get into really tight streams. There's there's a couple streams where I know I'm not going to have room 
to back cast or sometimes even roll cast a 10 foot rod. I'm gonna fish an eight and a half foot or a nine foot. Um, but when I get into streams so small that I know I'm gonna be bow and air casting all day, I'm bringing a nine foot rod more than likely, maybe even a 10 footer because that that's a very short range style of casting and having that extra couple feet on that rod is gonna give you a lot more reach and just allow you to be a lot more effective um, with that bow and arrow cast. Although I will say threading it through the threading it through the bushes and streams like that can be a little bit of a pain. Uh, but I, I think it's worth the I think it's worth the the pain to to have all that extra reach. And uh, yeah, so that's why my favorite size of rod, the rod I use the most, is a 10 foot rod, either a 10 foot four weight. Uh, or a 10 foot three weight Euro nymphing rod that I put a four weight line on. Uh, I also know a lot of guys that fish those with three weight lines, but I prefer them with four weight lines. It helps me. Uh, I think it helps them roll cast a little better. It helps them throw a little bit heavier nymph rigs. And with this short range, as we're fishing in these small streams, it doesn't overload that rod. Um, and so I would recommend everybody that's fishing small streams a lot, get a 10 foot rod or at the very least you should be fishing it with a nine footer. Um, the smallest I ever go is on a tiny, tiny stream. I don't want a rod shorter than eight feet. And I have rods shorter than that, but when I get out there, there are rods that I have just for fun. And when I get out and actually start fishing them in these small streams, unless it's a very flat stream where I don't have to high stick, it gets to be quite a pain. Um, even on the tiniest of streams, anything shorter than an eight foot rod just gets to be a real pain. And even most places that that one's a pain too. So if you're fishing a lot of small streams or if you are getting ready to start fishing small streams, you're looking for a rod to fit that scenario. I would strongly recommend that you look at a 10 foot rod or at least a nine footer. Um, but Hey, if you disagree with me, let me know, tell me in the comments what rods you like to fish in small streams and why. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.